we have these internal chambers. That's what the ventricle means. And there's four of them. So if you're looking at the two halves of the brain, ventricles one and two, one of them exists on the right, one of them exists on the left. Those are referred to as ventricles one and two. Once we get past ventricles one and two, which are termed our lateral ventricles because they're going to be lateral in the brain tissue, okay? They're, lar they're the largest. They are the most rostral, meaning towards the front. They form an arc in each of the cerebral hemispheres. The arc is going to meet my third ventricle. This one is a median space inferior to my corpus callosum. It gets connected by what is termed an inter, meaning in, inside, ventricular, for the ventricles, foramen, a hole. Third meets up with the fourth. This is going to be between my pons and my cerebellum. So at this point, I've got ventricle one and two, because there's one on the other side, three coming to four. They're going to be connected by a cerebral aqueduct. What do you think of when you hear the term aqueduct? Channel. Water. I think about a channel of water. We're going to see that it narrows to form my central canal that's found going all the way down the length of the spinal cord. So I've got these ventricles that are up here eventually making their way to my spinal cord and that central canal goes all the way the length of it. What was found in that central canal? My CSF my cerebrospinal fluid. So here's the other part of the puzzle to it. It's in the ventricles that the cerebrospinal fluid will get produced. This will be the area that gives rise to the CSF that will wash over the brain and the spinal cord tissue. So these ventricles that we find in the brain, one, two, three, four, okay? On either the floor of one of these four or the wall of one of these four, okay, so depending on which one you're looking at, you're going to find what's termed, oops, I got this spelled wrong, choroid, C-H-O-R-O-I-D, sorry about that. <clears throat> the choroid plexus. Do you remember what we termed or what our definition of plexus was based on the last chapter? We had like our cervical plexus, lumbar plexus. It was a grouping of something. 
And in the case of our spinal nerves, it was a grouping of those axons. Do you guys remember that? Okay. Here, for the choroid plexus, it's a spongy mass of blood capillaries. We haven't talked about blood vessels. What do, what do the capillaries allow to happen? The exchange of uh, nutrients and oxygen. My exchange of materials. When we think about our vascular system, when we think about blood vessels, and like if you think about the heart, the aorta branching off, vena cava returning, that sort of thing. Okay, the aorta begins to branch. You get your thoracic, you get your abdominal, and then you get all of these vessels that are going to come up. Think about <clears throat> brachial, radial, ulnar, all this source, femoral, okay, arteries, meaning they're carrying blood too. All right, is any exchange? occurring at the level of the big vessels. Is anything moving in and out of the big vessels? The ones that we know names to No. They are simply the tubes transporting the fluid. The exchange for anywhere in the body of material is the capillaries. So every tissue, every cell that is part of your body, it's fed by capillary bed. So these capillaries in the ventricles of the brain, that means we have access to the blood. Okay? So the cells that are going to be present in these areas we're going to have ependema. These ependymal cells, which is a type of neuroglia. What does that term mean? Neuro means nerve. Glial. Do you remember from part one? Aren't the glial cells like supporter cells? They're support cells. So, in these ventricles, where I find the choroid plexus, these ependymal cells are nerve support cells, glial cells, because their job support the nerve tissue. So these neuroglial cells we're going to produce cerebrospinal fluid. <clears throat> so ventricles one and two, lateral one and two on each side, meet up to the third ventricle, which meets up to the fourth ventricle, which meets up to my central canal of the spinal cord, now has access to cerebrospinal fluid, which can wash over these tissues, supply them with nutrients, help them get rid of waste, because nerve cells never stop, not until death, okay? Nerve cells never stop, meaning 
They are constantly making their product. What is the product of a nerve cell? The CSF is produced by those glial cells, which are support cells. But if they're in support of a nerve cell, because that's what they do, okay? Because it's nerve cells that are doing their job. They, they're, they're producing their product. Okay? Would that be like the action of the, the electrical stimulation that they send out? We know that these cells operate on the electrical activity, and therefore, when they have that nerve cell body up here, okay, where I've got this huge nucleus, okay, this nucleus contains DNA. The DNA will code for a what? What is the only thing a gene on our DNA can code for? Protein. protein. Remember, the only thing a cell can make is a protein. Because the only thing on DNA is a gene. And the only thing a gene can code for is a protein. What their job is, is something totally different. In this case, this protein, all right, that gets produced, it'll move down the axon, make its way to the terminal ends. In the case of our nervous system, what is this product called? It's a protein, but because it's in the nervous system, it has a particular name. Neurotransmitters. Ever heard of those? Okay. Lots of different ones. Okay. Lots of different ones that are made. So that's what that nerve cell is having to do. Glial cells are supporting that nerve cell throughout the entire system. Do you remember those from part one? Okay. So, <clears throat> the way that we can get materials to these cells, all right, the way that we can have the support of this tissue, we depend on CSF cerebrospinal fluid. Is this a product that gets produced only once and that's it? No. no. It's a constant production. We produce all day long. What it'll do, it'll get produced, got our ventricles, one, two, see how they're trying to represent one and two, okay? One and two are going to meet three, three is going to meet four, four is going to meet our central canal, and for the tissue of the brain, it'll get to wash over the brain tissue, wash over spinal tissue, and then it returns and goes back to the bloodstream. So that any waste that get produced and are picked up as that cerebrospinal fluid washes over this tissue, It'll return to the bloodstream, and any of that waste should hopefully be taken care of by the body. Hopefully. But things can go wrong. We know that. Okay? From time of birth forward, things can go wrong with CSF. All right? The makeup of it. It's a clear, colorless fluid, very similar to blood plasma, 
doesn't have all the comp 